Do you know the Bible calls the devil a serpent? In fact, the Bible calls him the old serpent. When an eagle wants to kill a snake, the eagle doesn't come and land on the ground and begin to fight with a snake. The eagle is the only uh, animal, if you will, or bird, that has the perfect precision in the eye. The eagle could be thousands of feet above and see things on the ground. Some of us, we need glasses to read things that are an inch away. The eagle can see exactly what is on the ground thousands of feet above the earth. And the eagle will come and pick it up. That is why an eagle can come and pick a fish out of the sea. And some of us will spend two hours with a hook and not catch the fish. Because of the power of precision. When an eagle wants to kill a snake, you know what the eagle does? It targets that snake and comes swiftly, picks the snake into the sky and rips the snake apart with its pick. You know why? Because if it tries to come to the level of that snake, the snake is more familiar to the terrain of the ground more than the eagle. So the eagle picks that snake and brings the snake into its terrain where he is familiar and begins to rip that snake apart. That is why there are situations God wants you to pick them from the realm of the natural into the realm of the supernatural because that is where you belong. And rip it apart. Rip it apart. Rip it apart. Some of us are busy fighting the battle in the terrain of the enemy. You can win that kind of a battle. Oh yeah. You can't. Because the enemy is more familiar. The devil was on this earth before your grandfather was born. He knows this neighborhood more than you. I'm telling you. Yeah. That's why the Bible calls him the old serpent. The guy has been around before all of us were ever born. And you want to win with him at a place where he's familiar. You must bait him. Bait the enemy and bring him to your terrain where you are familiar, where you are able to defeat the enemy because of the power that is available to you in your terrain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And that is the power God has given you. If you are hearing my voice, he says he's giving you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing... He didn't give any categorization. Nothing means nothing. Jesus. Nothing means nothing. That is why if I'm threatened that I'm going to lose my job, I'll smile and laugh. It's so amazing. People in the Old Testament even understood the scripture than us living in the best of dispensations. Look at the four Hebrew boys. They told them that if you don't bow and worship this idol, we're going to kill you. We're going to throw you into fire. He said, you know, we've been ready. He said, we've been ready. Because they understand. And then the king says, I'm going to increase the intensity of the fire seven times. To see if you're going to change your mind. He did that. And the boy said, you know what? We were born ready. Nothing would change our mind. And one thing they said that was so shocking was the fact that, you know what? Even if God doesn't save us, it's still okay. Amen. It's still okay. Amen. It means nothing was going to change their mind. That's why I love this song that K-Love plays, even if the healing doesn't come. Yeah. Because sometimes your situation is the miracle that is needed to challenge others. Yes. And that is why that song is so relevant. The song says, even if the healing doesn't come, you're still God. Yes. But some of us would want to judge God based on what we are going through. If God didn't heal me, I don't think God exists. Sometimes you go out to preach to people, they ask you, if God is really God and God is really alive, why are there wars in the world? They ask you all kinds of why, why, why is there earthquake? Why are people dying? They ask you all kinds of questions, right? And that doesn't change who God is. It's because they don't even understand that God doesn't rule on this earth. God gave the authority of this earth to you and I. 
And we know Adam committed the greatest treason by selling this to the devil. He did that. And so the Bible calls him today the God of this world. Hallelujah. But we thank God that we can live in this world and not be of this world. Amen. Yeah, we can. Amen. When you live in this world and you are not of this world, it means that prince of the kingdom of darkness has no authority over you. You live in this territory, that seems to be his, but you are living in another realm. Amen. That controls this realm. Amen. So that entity of darkness that rules and governs this realm has no power over you. That's a place I want to be. Amen. Yeah. To be in this world and not be of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Colossians chapter 2. We're getting somewhere with this word. Because there is some power in you that must come alive. Amen. There is a demon troubling you that must run away from your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. There is a hold of addiction in your life that must be broken. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2, look at verse number 14. 14 and 15. Bible says, blotting out this handwriting of ordinances that was against you. Some of us walk around not knowing what is fighting against us. There are things that fight against us. I said there are things that fight against us. You ever heard somebody say, what you don't know can hurt you? What you don't know. Can. Can. Yeah, what you don't know. <coughs> One of our members in Middletown recently was mowing. And whilst mowing, <coughs> She realized that the mower was not really cutting the grass the way it's supposed to cut. So she just stopped. And she realized that there was a lot of grass stuck at the bottom of the mower. So she decided to put her fingers in and get the grass out. And by the time she did that and pulled her fingers out, she had lost a couple of fingers. It was gone. It was all mowed. Figures were all mode. What you don't know can hurt you. She didn't know that she had to turn off the blade. Stopping doesn't turn off the blade. You stop, but you still have to turn off the blade. She stopped, but the blade was still going. But the reason why the blade wasn't moving was because it was choked by the grass. And the moment she started pulling the grass out, the blade what you don't know can hurt you. She didn't know. You know, sometimes we think, what we don't know, well, uh, it won't hurt me. Yesterday we were talking about all kinds of food that Africans eat. And, you know, Lord. I won't say it again. All kinds of food, you know. Uh, one of our ministers couldn't deal with it, you know. Because the food some Africans eat. But, but the fact is that God has sanctified every food for Amen. all human beings. And given us all the variety. So you could eat anything. Amen. 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 And people were talking about all kinds of food they were eating. And man, to some people it was really gross. Minister mm. Masia Sister couldn't take it. Some of the food. In fact, Minister Caesar at one point said, if I knew you, you ate cat, I wouldn't have married you. <laughs> and I was like, but it's not too late. You can still make the decision. <laughs> yeah, cat. Eating cat. Wow. Africans eat cat. Yeah, they do. Africans eat dog. And you're like, ah, we'll... But Americans eat frog. And for Africans, that is ew. How can you eat frog? I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine roasted chihuahua? 
that, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And Pastor Chris even made things worse. He was talking about the eye of what? Antelope. He says his best food is the eye of antelope. He says if you cook it half boiled, it goes like that. And if it is well done, the eye is like, really? You want to eat me? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Where are we? Are we still in church? <laughs> All right, Colossians 2, let's read 14 and 15. Bible says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Number 15. And having spoiled, having spoiled, not going to spoil, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, publicly. He made a public display and ridicule of them, triumphant over them in it. What is it that he's referring to? His death on the cross. If you read the whole chapter, you understand. Triumphant, triumphant over them in it. In what? In his death on the cross, his burial and his resurrection. Bible says he triumphed over them. But verse 14 is talking about ordinances that were in the way. Things that were done before you were born that you don't even know. Things that are fighting you that you have no clue. There are certain things that as parents we do, it brings curses on children. It does. That is why there are unique challenges in some families. There are families, you, you, you see all the women in that family, they've married three times. And you belong to that family and you, you know this second marriage of yours is only for a season. And you've got into a place of saying, well, I think it's a normal thing in our family, so I'll just go with the flow. No, you have a responsibility to stop that normal flow. Because as a child of God, that must become an abnormal flow. You must rise up and say, it stops with me. It starts with me. You can go to a family and not even a single member of that family. You can trace three generations backwards. Not even one of them has ever been to college to have an associate degree. And you're like, well, you know, we are the average American, so it's okay. It, it must stop at some point. I said a cycle got to stop at some point. And that cycle must stop with a believer. Hallelujah. It must stop with you, the man and the woman that has been empowered by God. You've been given authority, exousia, the ability to exercise power. It's not a distinction between power and authority. Power is just the ability. Authority is you giving the power to exercise that which has been given to you. Yeah. The enemy has power to do things here and there, but you have authority which is beyond power. Power is just the ability. Yeah, he can do that, he can do that, but you have authority, you are licensed. So, power is a guy with a gun with no license. Authority is to have the gun and the license. It means a guy with a gun is shooting illegally, and that's what the devil has been doing all this while, because all he has was power without a license. But God gave you the license to stop him. Amen. Is somebody understanding the word of God this morning? Amen. You have the license to stop the devil in his tracks. Amen. God gave you that authority. So you don't stand and laugh around. You stand and defeat that enemy. Because God empowered you to defeat him. Because he defeated him already on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Bible says, having blotted out. And I thank God for the blood of Jesus because it's, it speaks better things than the blood of bulls and animals. Amen. In the Old Testament, that blood of animals only covered. It only covered. You know what that means to cover? It means if you remove the cover, it was still there. But the blood of Jesus doesn't cover. It blots it out. Amen. It leaves no trace and no evidence. After it has erased it, 